Ben Simmons, Cam Thomas, and Jacques Vaughn appear to be on the same page, and that is going to be great news for Nets and Nets fans as we enter the season. What to expect from these three and how it changes the dynamic of the team when all of them seem to be operating on the same level. We're going to get into that first with the music. You are Locked On Nets, your daily Brooklyn Nets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome back to the Locked On Nets podcast on the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team, those Brooklyn Nets, every single day. I am Doug Nori, the owner-operator of DFSR.com. If you need some NBA projections, go on over to DFSR.com. NBA right around the corner here, as you will, as you surely know, if you're following along with the podcast or just aren't living under some kind of non-NBA rock out there. No Adam Armbrecht on the podcast today, but that's okay. You can talk to both of us. Over on subtext, join subtext.com slash locked on nets to get started. Free trial over there. It's just nets talk all day long. If you're looking to trade text uh, about the nets, which I have a feeling if you're listening to this show, you are. Make sure you are listening. Go sign up to join subtext.com. Join the uh, rampantly growing community over there that's just talking Brooklyn Nets basketball all day long, trading stuff back and forth. Join subtext.com slash. Locked on Nets. All right. Tons to talk about here today. We've done a couple post game uh, podcasts right so far. We did the really, really positive one coming out of the first game, the live show that we did following the first preseason game against the Lakers. Appreciate everyone that tuned in uh, to that one. We did the, uh, you know, sort of the other side of the coin on the last episode talking about some glaring sort of stuff. And that glaring is probably overstatement. Some things that we, you know, might carry some concerns about going into next season, excuse me, when it comes to, you know, what the earth this season, when it comes to what the nets uh, could be, or might not be able to do on the court. So I think we've covered both, you know, kind of the, the gamut of what to, you know, what we can take away from that first game. But one thing we didn't actually talk about was, <clears throat> excuse me, the quotes from some of the players following the game and how they sort of thought about how things went, how they sort of thought about, um, their first action back into basketball, you know, basketball action on the hard court after a preseason, after, um, you know, just going through summer workouts, after we just talked about a bunch of different things of expectations and how they sort of viewed what happened uh, on the court here against the Lakers. So I wanted to go through the uh, what Ben Simmons had to say. I want to go through what Cam Thomas had to say. I want to go through what Jacques Vaughn had to say following the game. And really the theme here, and this should get Nets fans really excited, is that these three really appear to be on the same page right now going into this season. And that's something that we were unclear about uh, over the course of the summer. It's like, yeah, everyone kind of has things to say about where they're going to be with their game. We can always just spend time reading into you know, what we thought this means, what we think, you know, this say this quote means or what this non quote means, or, you know, sometimes silence speaks louder than words. And sometimes words speak louder than words. But finally, after this one, all three I and mean, the whole team got uh, were interviewed in the post game and sort of discussed. And well, I mean, Simmons and Thomas didn't mention each other, but everyone did mention um, you know, Vaughn talked about both. And then even Cam Thomas weighed in on Vaughn as well. And I think the quotes here are instructive in how we sort of start thinking about this season going in, going into the season and whether or not this is a Nets team that appears to have all of their, I don't want I guess priorities would be the word, but are they on the same page? I, I think it's just that simple. Are these players and coaches on the same page with expectations? Are they on the same page with what is going to happen this year? And are they, are we hitting the ground running when it comes to, you know, sort of thinking about, this team as a whole as, as everyone here, even if the ex, you know, whatever the expectations are NBA writ large, are these three guys specifically guys who have had massive question marks for a variety of different reasons over the last couple of years, are these guys heading into the season, knowing that the roles are set, are they going in with you know, full confidence? And I think what we can tell from the first few quotes coming out of these games um, or this first game was that, yeah, this looks to be the case, uh, right? At least right now here, Wednesday, October 11th, as we record this, it, it looks like the Nets, these three 
in terms of just Nets communication are, are, are here. So we'll start with Ben Simmons. Uh, we were all really excited what we saw with him. I was even getting texts, non-Nets. This is how you know it's big. Non-Nets fans texting about uh, Simmons highlights coming <laughs> coming out of this Lakers game. That's when you know uh, we've, we're starting to hit a new sort of level with Ben Simmons. Not expectations, but maybe excitement where – you know, there's people that don't follow the Nets are like, holy cow, did you see did you see with Simmons? And I was like, hey, I talk about the team every day. So, yeah, I did see uh, <laughs> I did see the Simmons highlights in, in real time and then uh, afterwards as well. But Simmons offered some really encouraging words following the game. Uh, str- first off about his health. Um, and we this had been there's been lots of lead up around this over the course of the offseason. Uh, much had been made of him talking about how he had felt and you know how he was struggled with injuries last year and how that he looks to be over that that hump um, when it comes to just how he feels um, to the point where there was words of Kevin Durant. It came out the other day that Kevin Durant wouldn't have asked for a trade had Ken Ben Simmons been, <laughs> been healthy. We'll talk about that on another podcast. That was a little that was a little bit stinger. But Simmons's quotes, he said, "Amazing. That's it. He just felt really amazing. Happy to be out there." competing, uh, feeling good out there and being able to contribute like I know I can. I felt great. It's the best in two years for sure. Uh, so that one that one just bled through into the screen. You could just tell by the way he was taking it to the rim. You saw him take LeBron off the dribble. He had the emphatic dunk that uh, really signaled more than anything else that it looked like he was really, really healthy. We've been waiting sort of with bated breath to see how he was going to move in open space. And we had just saw him like come up really just very timid, uh, even on dunks last year and the rare cases where he was presented the opportunity when he threw down off the transition uh, in uh, with the open floor. That was like, OK, he's back, man. Like that back feels great. He feels he's unleashed. He's good. He kept going with some of the quotes. He says, wasn't I'm paraphrasing a little bit here. I wasn't uh, feeling concerned about the contact. Uh, I'm hitting these guys in practice and, you know, talking about just like taking some bodies. He obviously is out there against uh, LeBron, who's that was his defensive assignment that he had. He got mashed up with AD, I think, twice. Um, and he just kept going and said, I wanted to get out there and keep going. Uh, it, th- talking about when Jacques Vaughn had sort of removed the starters, except for Cam Thomas, removed the starters. And um, they were going to like just let, let some of the bench guys go. So Simmons was all smiles here. Um he went on finally to say my teammates are, are going to be getting a lot of shots if I'm attacking and getting to the rim. So I think he knows what his role is here. I think that there's a clear understanding between him and Vaughn. We'll get this, some of Vaughn's quotes here shortly, but there's an understanding uh, about like sort of what his role is going to be. And I think that this, what this preseason game, this first one did was, um, get, was, understand that you know, we kind of worried about or wondered about like with the starting lineup too, like whether they were going to be on the pay- same page with who was going to be in the starting lineup and if Simmons was going to be the point guard, blah, blah, blah. Um, I think in terms of getting on the same page here, this was the first other clear sign. That's like, okay, he's going to be starting. He looks healthy. The contract is the contract. They have to have Ben Simmons be good in order for the team to be good. And I think we can check this one off pretty definitively now is that like this is his going to be his role going into the season. Spacing will be what it is, but that's okay because Ben Simmons is better than basically everybody else that they have on the team when he's healthy. And this was an important first testing ground to understand that everyone else sort of understood that that was going to be the case. So want to get into little Cam Thomas, want to get into uh, what Jacques Vaughn had to say about these two as well, which is really going to feel pretty encouraging, all things considered. We'll get into that here in a second. First, going to tell you about our friends over on FanDuel. Snap into action this NFL and NBA season with FanDuel America's number one sports book. We love FanDuel over here. I love getting in on the uh, – the season award stuff already. You got a ton of stuff up for NBA when it comes to season awards. After I mentioned Ben Simmons, I think getting like plus 7,500 for MVP, baby. Let's go. Let's just get a little cheddar down on that. Uh, we can sweat it all season long. Long shot to, for sure. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet on FanDuel. That's 200 in bonus bets. That's win or lose. So don't even worry about if you're going to win the bet or lose the bet. You're just going to get the $200 in bonus bets. No matter what, if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. They got the spreads. They got the player props over under so much more. You could spend hours just going through all the ways FanDuel has sliced and diced this thing. Every which way, it's awesome. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Locked on. Kick off the NFL season. FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. 
All right, let's roll through some Cam Thomas quotes. Always love a good Cam Thomas quote. Um, he we, we talked uh, at length uh, during this offseason how he had done a lot more media stuff uh, when it came to just being out there and forward facing. Um, and that made us sort of but wonder about what his role was going to be this year, too, right? Like he had been at times, I don't want to say prickly, but like he just he's a quiet guy, right? I don't think he just loves getting out in front of the media i think he's a pretty singular dude i think that you know he wants to play basketball and that's kind of it and yeah, he's just like not a guy that just he just doesn't talk a lot right that's fine that's not that's not a knock at all i think it's just really sort of what the case is when it comes to cam thomas and we talked about it last episode, two episodes ago just like sort of the utter surprise that we had that cam thomas was going to be starting in that game excitement like it was after a full season a uh, full season last year of just total head scratching stuff around his minutes. And then an off season where there was really no clarity laid down around like what his role was going to be going into this year to have him come out and start was just awesome. Right. It's just like, okay. He has a role. Things are kind of set here, at least to start. It's his play. It's his spot in the lineup to lose. The Nets need to see what they have going into his third year. Like he's going to you know, extension eligible. What are they going to do long-term with this guy? All this different stuff that you think about with Cam Thomas, that would have provide would have had a million more questions had he just been like the seventh guy in off the bench or like you know with this total garbage time unit at the end or whatever. I think those things would have been we would have been doing totally different podcasts around that and probably just freaking out a little bit um, trying to figure out what the heck the Nets' plan was. I think here Vaughn starting him and you know, putting him in a position to succeed, putting him in a position that, you know, sort of in the hierarchy of the team, that this is where he's going to be was really, really important. And, and Cam Thomas did have some uh, some interesting quotes coming out of this game that I wanted to go into. And he had one in particular that I thought was very, uh, it was very Cam Thomas like um, he talked a little bit about the spacing. He talked to said how we have to figure out the spacing. He said it was, quote, easy fix um, just in terms of just how those guys uh, were going to operate together. Uh, we, you know, maybe refer didn't say it by name, but referring to like Simmons and Claxton being on the court together with him. Um, that how that the spacing was going to be an issue that but, you know, when there's. Uh, there's going to be opportunities to score as well. Cause he went on to say, when you play with Ben Simmons and Spencer Dinwiddie, uh, you get on run. Um, you, you got to knock it down. He said, they're going to get out there. They're going to kick it to you. You got to knock it down. You have to read the game. So I think he was feeling pretty good around like sort of what his understanding of the role within the offense was going to be specifically when he was playing with those guys. He talked a little bit about how, you know, his scoring came a little bit more in the second half. Obviously we saw he kind of went nuclear uh, after they took the starters out and it was just like him and Austin Reeves dueling uh, jump shot banjos uh, <laughs> during the second half. But, you know, talking about, um, just like sort of what his role was and understanding that, yeah, like when I'm on the court with those guys, this is what I need to be able to do. I need to be able to hit shots. I need, if the, sh the threes are going to be open, I need to be able to knock those down. And this is what I need to be. And then, you know, we saw in the second half when that wasn't the case and those guys weren't around and the talent level maybe just sort of thins out a little bit, then that's going to be the time that he needs to get out there and just do a lot more on ball stuff. I think there is a growing understanding for him about how he needs to operate in the offense and how he's going to give his best chance to stay on the court, right? Because Vaughn has been critical of this in the past, and and defense is going to be a thing here too, something to watch out for specifically, you know, if they're going to run dif different defensive coverages, like how is he going to be operating as a point of the point of attack defender? But, uh, but Cam, like sort of understanding that, like, this is my role. This is what I need to do. When these guys are on the court, I have to do this. When those guys are not on the court, I have to do this. I think that's like, I mean, look, I could be reading a little bit into this, right? But that's just sort of a maturity that needs to come with a guy who wants to get more playing time and probably feels like up until this point, he probably deserves more playing time, but just was it just wasn't really happening. We talk about this a lot, right? We've been through this for multiple years. Like, why isn't Cam Thomas playing? This guy can drop 40 in a game. But are those 40 points that help a team win? Or are they sort of 40 points of empty calories? I think that's been part of the debate around where cam thomas has operated in the past and hopefully that's going to be start to move into the background here as hopefully a role for him becomes more defined and more set he did have a really funny i thought quote around i'm going to paraphrase this a little bit but talking about comfort level that he felt on the court during this game so he said um 
he said, okay, they asked if he would, the, the reporter asked him how, how he felt. Did he feel this is the most comfortable he had felt? And he actually gave two separate answers in terms of his comfort level. The first was he just has basically said he's always felt comfortable on the court, right? Like since day one. And I think that's been very obvious, right? Like he came into the league, was able to score right away. This guy can get shots in creative ways that few other, frankly, few other players in the NBA can get. He has an insane body control uh, when it comes around the rim. He can finish. He can get to the line, like sort of at elite level. So he's, and that's really, that is a confidence game, right? Like getting to the rack, uh, knowing that you can finish over bigger defenders, knowing that you can take guys off the dribble, the step back three. He's that's been part of his bag basically since he got into the league, since we first saw him in summer league. And then when he was on the court during some of those like insane stretches. So he says that he's always felt he's always felt comfortable. But then he makes a distinction Um as far as the game, he says, I've been comfortable. I know a coach expects because having a full training camp. Uh, he wants the team to run. This is the most comfortable I've been with the coach. That, I think, is interesting, right? And he sort of smiled, and I paraphrase that a little bit. But the, the idea here is he's saying that this is the most feel. this is the part where he feels like he's been on the same page with Jock Vaughn, maybe implying that that has not been the case before. He mentioned how Vaughn came in, you know, mid-season, the beginning of the season. They had switched coaches because, remember, it had been Steve Nash. And, um you know, until he was fired early, very early in the season last year. But he does make the distinction that this is – the, the most comfortable he's felt with Jacques Vaughn going in. Now, this could be chicken or egg stuff. Like, is he the most comfortable with Jacques Vaughn now because he's actually feels like he's going to get real playing time? Yeah, okay, that would comfort, that would make someone feel more comfortable. Have they had more communication than they have in the past? It would, it would seem like they have, uh, even though we didn't hear tons of stuff coming out of training camp one way or the other about what Cam Thomas's role was going to be. And we still haven't. We're now just in, you know, reading the tea leaves on the fact that he started uh, over some of these other prop options that as to take it like this is a definitive move going forward. We don't know that for sure, right? But Cam Thomas does say that he this is the most comfortable he's felt with the coach. And I do think that's important because there's clear, again, this is one of those things, say it without saying it, Okay, he says he's the most comfortable uh, with Jacques Vaughn that he's been. This would probably imply, and I think I don't think this is a reach, that there's been some discomfort here in the past around these two understanding each other or like what the role was going to be or maybe Thomas feeling like he deserved more playing time and he wasn't getting it. If they're on the same page here, if they understand each other and like what each needs to do uh, in terms of like sort of growing the game and making sure that the team is put in the best place to win, this is really pretty encouraging, right? So we have proof in the pudding. He got the start. He gets out there. Vaughn had really nice things to say about him. Um, and then also, as with anything, actions speak louder than words. You can say all the platitudes, you can say all the nice things in the world about somebody. And if those that guy just sits the bench, then that, 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 what does it mean? Right? <laughs> like, like you got, I, Jack Vaughn could get out and compliment me about my game uh, for two hours. No one would care because I'm not on the team and I'm not going to play. Right? So those words just don't even matter really at all with cam. The, the definitive piece of this was that he was in the starting lineup and that he clearly now feels like he's on the page with the same page with Jacques Vaughn. And that's a really, really great sign. Wanted to get into some of these Jacques Vaughn quotes as well. What he had to say about Simmons, what he had to say about Cam Thomas. We will get into that here in a second. All right, let's close this thing off with some stuff that Jacques Vaughn had to say about both of these guys. Uh, we know that Jacques Vaughn, great interview, uh, just laser focused on this stuff. I uh, love watching uh, <laughs> love watching Jacques Vaughn. I mean, he's the absolute best, too, when it comes to the sideline reporting stuff. Just the uh, the glare, the, the locking eyes, the no blinking that he gives uh, even the sideline reporters is great stuff. So I uh, and if nothing else, I mean, whatever, when the Jacques Vaughn coaching run comes to an end, hopefully, you know, years from now or whatever, we'll always be able to look back and say that this guy uh, has been able to give some really, really good quotes. Uh, let's just a couple things he said about Simmons. Uh, he said he attacked the rim. I think he played with pace. He looked pretty natural out there, getting up and down the floor, communicating, communicating with guys into the flow of the game. It was really good to see. And he had some really, really good minutes. Um, this just is going to follow up the fact that like, it really looks like going forward that Ben Simmons is going to be the starting point guard for this team, or at least, you know, even if you don't want to label him as a point guard, he's going to be starting with the starting five. Um, 
that he, that this is going to be sort of like where things go when it comes to to this stuff. And I think that like Simmons didn't do anything to make you think otherwise. Vaughn went on to say the pace that he plays with unscripted and having a flair in the flow to his game. Uh, <laughs> those things we want to get back to doing was instinctive basketball. I think you saw some of that and definitely a positive direction for him. Right. So, and that was, we saw that, right. We saw that with Ben Simmons. We saw that as he was operating within the flow of the game, that there was a more fluidity to what he was doing. Uh, Adam and I joked, you know, him just even throwing that sort of behind the head pass that sailed out of bounds over Dinwiddie's head. Yeah, it was a terrible pass, but it, it, <laughs> it was definitely a guy that was starting to feel more comfortable with where he was on the court. And Vaughn clearly saw that as well. So I think that like, there's no, um, there's no real concern here that Vaughn didn't see the same thing that we all saw. Right. And I think if we're just looking to come out of this preseason game, starting to understand what the team thinks about these guys, at least to start the season, at least to start, you know, their early rotations and what those are going to look like this one, this one seems really clear. And, and, and with Vaughn too, you know, we, this, the, piece about him and Simmons communicating that had been another point of contention last year too it came in over the summer that these guys maybe hadn't even really communicated with each other about Ben Simmons's health and sort of how he was feeling even during last year when things looked really poor and knowing that they're probably here on the same page now is a good sign and having Vaughn understand that this guy is the guy that needs to start and it just needs to be the, what it is for the Nets. Honestly, even if it looked worse, I, I think they'd still have to start Ben Simmons. I think that's just where they are with him as a player. I don't think that's that's that concerns over now, I think. But even if it was still a concern, I think we would still be saying, hey, you got to start him. This is the contract, the, the place in the league, what he's been in the past. Like we just need to be where the team is right now. This is what they need to do. But I think what with Vaughn's quotes and with his putting him in the, you know, starting him here, I think that that stuff is alleviated. And then when we get talk uh, with Cam Thomas, what Vaughn had to say about him, he says he this is the quote from Vaughn. He's grown from year one to year three. And part of that is knowing how you can affect the game on both ends of the floor, be accountable on both ends of the floor. Uh, that was the reason for starting tonight. Now, that is I thought that was a pretty instructive quote from Vaughn also about because I think we've known that his what we've implied or what we've what we've taken from other things that Vaughn said in the past is that that the reason that Cam Thomas isn't getting as many minutes as you like is that maybe he doesn't like the defensive effort. He doesn't like that where Cam is like, you know, fitting in defensively with this team. I think there's probably some part of his game, uh, even on the offensive end, that doesn't strike sometimes a team basketball oriented piece. And that was probably a concern. But saying that he's seen Cam Thomas grow in the last couple of years and become more of an all around player and that his, the accountability seems like it's there. That's a really, really good sign to show you that there's some on the same page kind of stuff, or at least that Cam Thomas is doing the things that Jacques Vaughn wants to see or the coaching staff wants to see in making sure that this guy can stick on the court long term. Right. Cause that's this, this is the goal, right? It's like one preseason preseason game, it's one preseason game. Like we're going to read as much as we can into it. What we're concerned about here is that there's a long-term narrative for Cam Thomas, that there's a thing that's going to go beyond just this one game. It's like, is he going to have a role this season? Is he going to have the, is he going to have the flexibility or is he going to have um, the space here to make mistakes? Is he going to have just the, um, the understanding and the confidence that like things don't always have to go right, but at least to start the season, my role is pretty set. If the, the accountability for him can be on both sides of the court and he's showing those guys like Vaughn and company what ne what they want to see, frankly, from a guy that they, you know, whether he's going to get more minutes or not, like, yeah, this is a really, really important piece, first piece here. So, again, words are words, actions are actions. I think what we saw from this first game pretty much definitively is that the concerns that we had going into this year about where these guys all lined up about who's what the roles were going to be, what the rotations were going to be, whether or not they were going to get fair shakes at actually like real minutes, whether we were going to get extended looks at them on the court together or just like on the court with the with the starters. Like, I think that we're going, we're headed in the right direction here, folks. This is completely the right direction. This is honestly, it's better than I could have even imagined <laughs> when it came to this. I mean, if I was making predictions even a week ago, and we did make predictions a week ago about like sort of how this could play out, I don't think we would have been anywhere. I think even the most bullish 
of, uh, of prognosticators around the Nets wouldn't have gone all the way here. Like Cam Thomas starts. We're talking great things about him. Like Ben Simmons looked as looks as healthy as can be. That's as far out on the on the predictive curve that you as you can get uh, in terms of like positivity. So everyone did the right thing here. Everyone said the right thing here. And when we're talking about being on the same page, it looks like everyone is at least for right now, after one preseason game, at least for right now, everyone appears to know what their roles are, appears to know what's expected of them, appears to know that they're going to be put in, in, a, in a place where they can put their best foot forward and make the best for, you know, for the team and for themselves. And I think if you're a Nets fan, you really, really, really can't ask for anything more than that. So super encouraging stuff. We'll see how it plays out over the rest of this preseason. Obviously, the real tail of the tape will be when it comes to the regular season as well. But in terms of where we're starting now, you can't ask for a better start to at least these first couple hours of the NBA preseason. All right, uh, we will be back later in the week. We're going to be following the preseason game. I'm not sure we're going to do a live one for that just because it's not uh, it's not against an NBA team, but we'll see how that one goes. But we either way, we'll have a recap of it by at least by Friday uh, in terms of just, you know, talking about whatever we saw, the new stuff that came from the preseason. In the meantime, make sure that you join subtext.com slash locked on nets join the nets conversation get over there with folks that are just talking about nets every day we're throwing out tons of stuff over there like pre-game stuff uh post-game stuff injuries thoughts uh watch parties everything it's all there over there on subtext join subtext.com slash locked on nets make sure you subscribe over on youtube or wherever you listen to podcasts always get to this point of the show when adam comes in with one of the quotes from the great american poets we don't have Adam here today. It's okay. Adam Arbrecht, one of the all-time great poets. We'll be back again tomorrow talking more Brooklyn Nets basketball.